Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to To Boldly Go, drinking a product of the Wednesday night, gentlemen. This is a show dedicated to talking about and reviewing the latest Star Trek episodes as they come out. Today we'll be talking about Star Trek Discovery, such sweet sorrow. As a warning, the show is full of spoilers, so whatever. I'm your host, Tactic Angel, and with me is Midget Radio, my murderous socialist friend. Hello. Hello, Midget Radio. How are you today? I am okay, Tactic Angel. How are you? I'm great, man. That's awesome. I'm great. That's awesome. I'm really, really positive. That's a step up from normal. I feel like it's okay. I'm okay. Doing all right. Now it's great. Well, I loaded this thing up, and I know that this is going to be an easy episode for us. <laughs> <laughs> and to enjoy the episode, I have another uh, glass of Stillhouse. Oh, As nice. you will recall, my absolute favorite bourbon that comes in a paint thinner tin. That's amazing. <laughs> you still need to try it. I do. I, I'm damn curious. Damn curious. All right. What do you have? Uh, I am working. I'm still working. I'm killing off all the, the shiner today. Oh. It's all, it's all dying today. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, here we go. Such sweet sorrow. Uh, Sarek is on a beach. He's meditating. He's lost, <laughs> he's lost his car keys. Amanda Grayson comes to deliver him some divorce papers. He cries out for Michael. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other side of the galaxy, the Discovery meets up with the Enterprise, which is suddenly there. So they evacuate the crew from the Discovery. So they're going to blow up the Discovery, too. Uh, they go to the bridge of the Enterprise and commence the remote self-destruction. It doesn't work. What? Then, then they try to shoot photons at it. And it still doesn't work. Ah, crazy. Because the orb data has taken over control of the ship. They go back to the Discovery because I definitely let people who were trying to kill me enter my house. Totally. And then they spend about 40 minutes crying about how Michael has to become the Red Angel Mark II. And take the Discovery into a time wormhole, a voyage from which she cannot possibly return. Yeah. I consider that a fucking promise. Yeah. <laughs> Midget Radio, how about this episode? Great stuff, Tactic Angel. Great stuff, as always. You know why I like this episode? Hmm. Because literally nothing happens. Nothing, it's true. Nothing happens, and man, it's, like, plot-wise, you can straight up tune out the last, like, 25 minutes of it. Whew, um, maybe even longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the director of um, choreography for Rise of the Sith, or whatever, the Revenge of the Sith, Okay. says when he's talking about lightsaber choreography... That mm. essentially the emotional resonance of the scene is lost after the first few minutes of the fight because <laughs> the fight just goes on too long. Sure. Okay. Do you think that having six scenes consecutively where people cry yeah. does about the same thing emotionally? Well, I think when it's people who are little more than cardboard cutouts, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. It's a little grating. Um, you, oh, you didn't think that it was totally convincing when they had uh, <laughs> Redhead who drives the ship and yeah. the Black Lady who says lines when they were yeah. saying stuff? Though Black Lady who says lines, as we remember, is adept at opening doors. Yes. Thank it's, God for that. She has yes. that ability. She's great at that. And then and Redhead not only sits at the at the at the at her station but sometimes stands she did and she turned around <laughs> jan turns around yeah Whew, i was so that's all exciting stuff um, i was worried the speed yeah. at which she turned around which was pretty <laughs> was. normal you were like oh man yeah take it easy honey amazing stuff so there's only a couple of real um interesting i guess not even interesting but minor plot points yeah and, and so like the structure of our episode is going to be a little bit minimalistic. Okay. So at some point, at relatively close to the beginning, Burnham touches a time crystal. Yes. Because she just can't help herself. Right. This allows her to see the future. Mm-hmm. 
but strangely in a way that she seems to have some ability to change the future. Right? As soon as I saw that, I like, Leland fucking kills everybody. Um, and then uh, kills her as well. And you're like, oh, well, that's definitely going to happen now, right? Like, yeah. Because she touched it and she has the time crystal and that's like how the rules work. Now, I don't know how Pike is supposed to get his face melted off. For no. sure, 100%, because there's nothing he can do about it now. Yeah. But apparently he's going to die before that happens. So I apparently um, the the thing I brought that up for, because this is really important, right? <laughs> What's important is we get to see Lady Space Hitler die. Yeah. And then Michael holds her dead body. Yeah. And starts crying. Yeah. Why? Uh, she's why <laughs> she is the space Ava Braun. I to, guess apparently to, to Lady Space Hitler. Literally nobody even knows. Nobody fucking nobody nobody in that writers' room knows. The director has no idea. Sinigua Martin Martin Green has no fucking idea. They were just like, well, this is where the tear. This is tears because she's dead. Tears now, and drama. That's all they. That's all they fucking know. I mean, it's, but there's no, that God damn, this show does not give a shit about anything that any of its characters are actually doing. Like, Well, people like Michelle Yeoh, and they would cry if she left the show. Uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> uh, I love that woman so much, and I think she is, this show is way beneath her. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I would feel better for her if she got a Downey commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a step up from this fucking garbage. Um, I'm going to guess that in the next episode that everybody doesn't die. Uh, I would imagine that's probably the case, yeah. And I would imagine that most of the people who like this show don't even recognize that as sort of (laughs) broken. Yeah. That's a hole. Yeah. Well, how can I mean? How can you uh, if you're still like watching the show up to this point? I mean, there's nothing it can do um, that could drive you away. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, there's yeah. nothing like. Well, like, for those of us who are hate watching it, mm-hmm. I think that that a certain amount of sanity might drive us back into the. I'm just gonna ignore it and see if it goes away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn it! I've seen every episode. I know. I don't want somebody to take that away because they suck. It's I not know. my fault that they suck. That's all it is. God, that is all it is. So at a certain point, um, the crew of the Discovery show up at the oppressed queen of the Dilithium Genius's planet. Thank to, God she's back. To ask her how to make a time crystal time right. Yeah. Uh, so she's a completely different person now. She's yeah. smart, entitled, <laughs> and insufferable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All the women have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And they need to plug the dark matter into the time crystal. Yeah, obviously. Why can't they use the transporter room? <laughs> I don't know. It runs on dark matter now. So. <laughs> or you know what? You know what? Actually, I believe they did say that they needed dark energy um dark energy the dark which which is in fact different um from dark matter maybe the writers actually know that of course i don't know where they're getting the dark energy from they but they wouldn't be getting it from dark matter they take a dark fire and they let <laughs> they light the dark matter on dark fire <laughs> and that creates more dark energy you get the dark fire from Either I guess the bowels of Kronos or the surface of Vulcan somewhere. I'm assuming um, it is actually where... given to you by a leprechaun. <laughs> you have to find the end of a space rainbow, <laughs> and there he will grant you uh, 3.14 wishes. <laughs> I hope you caught the E equals M C square reference. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for ruining Tig just a little bit. I know, I know, but she's not. She's not all the way there. She didn't start. No, she did not start bawling. Thank God. I did kind of like when she's like, 
by Stamets, I hate you. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, that was all right. God, she's, yeah. Man. I hate you too. Yeah. And they shake hands. And you're like, she that's is cute. the only like leveling presence on that fucking show. Um, oh, yeah. Now that, that soy Spock is fully. Oh, uh, yeah. Emasculated. Yeah. Yeah. I just, God, this was, I mean, it was terrible. Like, I, I couldn't really pay any attention to it, especially the last half of it. And I still, I don't understand what they're, I don't understand the plot. I don't understand. I don't understand what they're doing. Because they're like, is control, Leland is, is coming for them, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He's got, he's got everybody. <clears throat> but he, he, he ran away from them originally, right? And now he's coming back with... 32 ships. Okay, 31 ships. 31 ships. Okay. To get the sphere data. And they're like... So he can become an AI. Yeah. Which he already is. Which he already is. But I guess he's not all the way conscious? I don't know. He seems um, conscious enough, I take he it. He does seem like pretty self... Well, yeah, pretty pretty self-aware. Definitely definitely has intentions um, and, 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 and agency. Uh, but um but yeah okay so so they're so they're just sitting there <laughs> and they can't they can't jump but they can jump they can they, actually no, no, like no, if they, no, no, no they they needed to run the power of the spore drive into into the time crystal right that has to happen right now because they have to send the ship into the future right yeah but they need to do it while the Enterprise is there so that they can get the people off. Oh, maybe that... Okay. Is that really it? Is that really, like, the the, the limiting factor here? The thing that... The, the, the constraining factor that they have to get off? They can't just, like, let's jump. Well, it would be if they didn't also have enough people defect to the... Oh, God. Anyway, so... So at some point, like, Burnham walks out into the hallway, right? Yeah. And there's everybody standing there. They're, they all ambush yeah, her. Of course. Yeah, of course they do. Yeah. And if it doesn't prove to you that they randomly distribute lines to their characters. <laughs> yeah. The only character that we know beyond a reasonable doubt to a certainty of 100%, indisputable, incontestable, this is unquestionable says our families accepted the possibility of this moment the moment that they go <laughs> and die in space when we join starfleet yeah saru your fucking seed farming stone age family who thought you were dead accepted the possibility that in fact you weren't dead but traveled into the stars and not just traveled out into the stars but you'd been abducted by a benevolent organization in direct contradiction to their prime directive and decided to join them that line made me laugh out fucking loud. Um, because because of that, because none of that made sense coming from from Saru, and because refer because they were referring specifically to the fact that they were going into the future <laughs> forever. I was like, really? <laughs> Did anyone suspect for a moment that they? Their family member would be on a ship that would have to be propelled into the future because of an AI that is chasing them down for sphere data so that it can become conscious, which it already is. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's so, it is so stupid. God damn it. Yeah, it I is... think they, they classify it under the general grandfather paradox or <laughs> terminator paradox that, that you know... My my loved one has to go into the future with oh my a God. with a time machine and a spacecraft and I I farm dirt. That's, yeah, that's my job. Yep, they all saw this coming. So. <laughs> maybe maybe they all thought that maybe one day, one day that their loved one would meet the narcissistic messiah, and yeah. follow them into whatever Jonestown like ending. No this, shit, man. That this show definitely deserves. It definitely needs it. Yeah. It absolutely needs it. And it would and it's the only ending that actually makes any fucking sense. <laughs> like, uh yeah, you know, I'm not sure what it says about you and me about, you know, like if 
everybody's drank the Kool-Aid at the end of next episode. Yeah. But I'm I'm willing to try to wrestle with that for years to come if it would just I'm, happen. I'm fine with it. Um, I am completely fine with it. Because this, this show is a fucking joke. It's like, God, it is straight up Star Trek in name only. I mean, there's nothing really recognizable. I still cannot believe... I stopped and rewound it because I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Saru said my family yeah accepted yeah. this the moment i joined starfleet your family thought you were dead yeah everything's tying into the short treks but if you watch the short treks let alone that episode where um they threaten to declare war on the Ba'u because they don't do the things that they like yeah those two episodes tell you for sure there's no way she says it herself we thought you were dead yeah Ex- accepted the possibility i mean it's just more like the writers that they're not even paying attention to their own fucking scripts man that's why there are so many goddamn plot holes there I mean, nobody's paying attention there's no like continuity supervisor or anything in there there's not even anybody walking around saying do you think it's weird that saru's on the bridge with a knife <laughs> Because if I, I were think, Pike, uh, I'm pretty sure they don't even watch the show. <laughs> if I were Pike, I probably wouldn't let this violent person run around <laughs> with a knife. He does get a little unhinged. Yeah. Are time. you saying that I can't do this without emotion? Because mm. if you are, I'll definitely kick your ass. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Midget Radio. Yeah. Do you think that at some point in the future, maybe someone will invent a device where you can take like an explosive charge and maybe make it like blow up from a distance. I don't know. Or, or maybe after like a set amount of time, you know, it's hard to say. I can't really envision that sort of technology. It does seem a little bit useful. That may be why discovery has to go into the future (laughs) so that someone will have invented it by then. Oh, yeah. Then they could put the bomb (laughs) on the warp core. (laughs) We'll call it a bomb. I'm sorry. That's... I I must have invented that. Maybe I can still patent it. Maybe. (laughs) Nobody can figure out how to blow up Discovery. Yeah, it's pretty hard. It it lets you back onto the ship. That doesn't make any sense. I know, dude. It doesn't fucking make sense. Just... (sighs) (laughs) So that ship tried to blow me up, but I'm going to let yeah. my shields down and I'm going to let the people back onto it, either with shuttlecraft or the beaming technology. Yeah. Or those cool bridges, all those cool fucking bridges that just came out of uh, goddamn nowhere. By the way, that looks, <laughs> they, they literally connect the two ships from the points that they could not possibly be further from each other. Yeah. You're yeah. Like, if you wanted like a docking clamp thing, you'd be like saucer to saucer, right? Yeah. It's like it can be 15 feet. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like this people mover surrounded by a really precarious looking force field. It yeah. <laughs> Cuz I don't feel good about that. Now, I was hoping the entire time that it would fail and they would be sucked out into the vacuum of space. Sure. And sadly Pike would die, but this isn't the real Pike because clearly this it's isn't Star Trek. Not. Yeah, no, it's not. No, it is not. No, it is not. <laughs> Did you realize this entire show takes place within about forty minutes? That's it. yeah. I guess it kind of yeah. They I mean, they it kind said of felt like that. They didn't really do anything. Well, okay. Let me put it this way: at a certain point, shortly after they jump to Dilithium Queen's planet, Poe. Her name yes. is Poe. Oh. She's named after a Star Wars character. Yeah. So they jump to Poe's planet, and then they say the Enterprise is about 40 minutes out, and whoever's 10 minutes behind them, Section 31's 10 minutes behind them. Oh, yeah. And I don't think that the timeline works at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, probably true. But in the amount of time that this happens, Sarek and amanda are able to travel across the universe i what the fuck say goodbye yeah. to their adopted daughter yeah and leave yep <laughs> good times why not 
Do you under do you have any idea what Sarek was apologizing for in that scene? I I don't recognize there being a Sarek in this show. Cuz like he's <laughs> like I just want to ask for your forgiveness or whatever cuz I wasn't like, I wasn't a good what? human daddy. And she's just like of course Burnham. Of course I forgive you for whatever. Like what are you fucking talk I don't I don't understand what the hell is going I God damn it. I got nothing, just, buddy. I got it's nothing. Just fucking stupid. <laughs> God damn it. That I I don't understand what people are fucking reacting to in this show. It's just it is just it is totally incoherent drama. Like well, I mean, to get to your point, the batshit madness. Hmm? This episode starts out after we see, you know, Sarek looking for his car keys on the beach. Yeah. Burnham's sitting there staring at the time crystal doing science on the control panel. Yeah. Pike walks in and and Burnham says in quick succession. And my sense is that they say it this quickly so that you do not have time to think about it. <laughs> but the signal was sent to this planet for a reason. Yeah. Her mother is gone. The suit is destroyed. And soon Discovery will be destroyed too. But this can't just be about endings, can it? Isn't the whole story about ending, ending control, yeah. or ending yeah. all sentient life in the galaxy? Yeah. If we blow up the ship, as far as we can tell, we stop control. Yeah. And then my mother's sacrifice was for nothing? No, she came back. To stop control, yeah. Yeah, if you stop control, then whatever is going on with your mother in the future, it's fine. Yeah, mission accomplished. <laughs> But no, your mother built a dysfunctional time suit with a time crystal stolen from Klingon time wizards. Yeah. So somehow that means there has to be a happy ending. I guess. I fucking guess. I don't. And now the red the red signals are coming from Burnham, who in fact is some some sort of red angel yep. or something. Turns out and, Dr. And Stop Monster got one right. And for some reason is just letting off fireworks at places. It's to get people's <laughs> attention. It's all going to come I, together next episode, man. Next episode. I can't wait to find out what the reasoning was for that. I want to see future Burnham. I wonder if she is dead, more sanctimonious than present Burnham. <laughs> God, can you imagine if she's wandering around the future with the self-assured motivations oh of a person who saved all existence? Oh, my God. She's definitely got a posse like her own fucking discipleship yeah she's got like the 12 people who are needlessly going into the future with him yeah yeah and let's yeah. let's not worry about who gets to be the captain because it's clearly going to be burnham yeah totally or i mean that's fine right orders don't really matter so mm -hmm. <laughs> just do what you want you do what feels right so i have a philosophical conceptual question okay Let's say that we want to examine the orb and that it has conscious will, even while it's in the computer bank of okay. the discovery. So it will not allow its memory to be destroyed because it right. wants to live on in the memory of other beings. Right. If it wants to live out its life and be appreciated, even in its death, with its with this vast intellect so insurmountably powerful that it can control other technology even as a copy of itself. Right. And another Starfleet vessel can't destroy it. Are we to believe that this thing will be remembered and has gone to this extraordinary effort to prevent its own destruction, that it would be willing to be complicit in the destruction of all life in the universe so that it would not be remembered? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Under what circumstances would control possibly co-opt this right i don't know yeah i don't know it doesn't make sense because I, I i don't even understand how it works in the first place because it it doesn't seem like they've been trying to establish that the even this i don't know was was this is the data itself somehow already conscious yeah i think that's the, i mean is it that what it is or is it just on. like a or is it just like this weird like this proto consciousness that's only like a kind that's kind of in a survival mode 
and that's it. You know, it doesn't exactly have like a self awareness, <sighs> but it's a sort of biological. None of this matters. I can tell you for sure the writers have no idea. So, um, so like what I what I would have thought would be interesting is if you have this orb, right? And even if the orb has normal intellect, like okay, like pare it down. It knows everything in the universe for ten thousand years, and then maybe it has ten percent of that capacity, right? Right. Which would still probably be a lot larger than yours or my, your your capacity or my capacity, right? Sure. Wouldn't it stand to reason that I could convince you to delete yourself if you knew <laughs> that it would save the universe? Right. right. If, if it inevitably leads to the destruction of all sentient life, yeah. If, be pretty. if I put a gun on the table and I slid it over towards you and I said that your suicide would save the universe. Yeah. You know, fuck that. Not even that. Earth. Or the United yeah. States. Yeah. Wouldn't you willingly sacrifice yourself? Sure. Yeah. That, yeah. It's, it's, it's me or everyone and me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't understand why this highly evolved being is incapable of being reasoned with. They can see it has at least some will. Why? Yeah. It, yeah. I don't know. I mean, fuck. Kirk tries to do it with V'ger and yeah, I mean, we've, that's not the only one where you end up with hyper intelligent beings that you have to kind of like feel out before you can, I mean, they do it with the Borg too, even though the Borg is a little bit less successful in, in terms of, <laughs> you know, resolution, Star Trek yeah. four, same thing. What is yeah. the, what is the giant space dildo want? It wants yeah. whales. Yeah. Don't we all? Yeah. It likes to talk to whales. <laughs> just put me underwater i can do it coach i'm ready <laughs> i i just don't under it it's so i that would be the intellectual approach right yeah we have to reason with it hey ship red orb guy whatever you are going to be manipulated to create a thing that's going to destroy the universe you will not be remembered yeah what do you say can yeah. you do us a solid? We'll write a nice book about you. We'll make a monument. Whatever it takes. Yeah. But yeah. we need your consciousness to end. Yeah. Nope. Not going to do of that. We're going to get in a space fight. It's a, a Vulcan photon torpedo has lodged itself <laughs> in the Enterprise. I oh can't tell goodness. what's going on. <laughs> the future is scary. <laughs> it turns out it's like in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be amazing oh man we had a lot of time to resolve this one. Oh man yeah but all this all the ships show up <laughs> Ugh. yeah dude i i i mean i don't i don't know i don't know what to tell you i feel like you're trying to salvage a part of a show that's been lost for a long time now <laughs> i'm not trying to salvage it i'm just i just don't understand <laughs> why they can't take an intellectual route to this they plot. can't i mean they've already started with there's a thing in the that wants to destroy all sentient life in the universe. <laughs> like we need a wizard. The and universe. some magic rocks. <laughs> I mean, I, it's just it is childish. Like my god, this has got to be like seriously. This has got to be some of the least creative, the least talented writers in a in a in a in a writers room that I've ever seen on a show. This is like. Like, they've never done anything before. They just go right for the everything. Everywhere is going to die. <laughs> That's how it works. Those are some pretty big stakes, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's just so desperate. It's so desperate. They have no idea how to, like, build any real drama or build any real characters or fashion any kind of actually interesting story. They just go for the generic things at every opportunity. The biggest plot with the highest stakes, with the most irrational reactions to it, to create the highest amount of drama they possibly can. I mean, there's no way to defend it. I mean, even if you there if you were to go to your average improv class at a high school, yeah, you would come up with more likable characters, yeah, and probably a better storyline than than this. Like this is intentionally bad. It right. It it has to be. Uh, it has to be <laughs> because it's 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 incomprehensible to me 
that that you can't manage to make Michael Burnham even remotely likable. Like, yeah, you ha- you've had a lot of time with her. You've pretty yeah. much exclusively spent time on her. Yeah, I mean, we grew we grew to love Ty, like right, Colonel Ty. Yeah, totally, dude. Yeah, we liked his fucking wife. His wife. Yeah. Was um, she is a slut whore and a bitch, like. a miserable <laughs> cunt. Most of the thing, and then in one scene, in one fucking scene, yeah, turns the whole thing around. Yeah, and, and you're just like Ellen. Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh I, oh, I love her so much. Yeah, cause and like that, I love that relationship so much. Like, cause you can see. You can see why Ty is attracted to her and why she's attracted to him. That like that mutually like self-destructive streak that they both have that they both fucking share and they both recognize in each other. This weird self-destructive almost kind of death wish that they both share that like that's what kind of binds them together and it's fucking beautiful. <laughs> like I love that relationship so much and i love both of those characters um be- because of that and god damn it this sh- god fucking christ there are better shows on tv tech. <laughs> there are better science are. fiction shows you yeah. know and one of the reasons why i was kind of in a good mood is because i watched the orville first yeah i d- yeah i did too actually and so like I already watched that episode. It feel pretty good. Yeah. Then, then it, you get to this one, and God, if a paragraph worth of anything happens. Yeah. And for the most part, they they don't shit on the characters that they've pretty much already ruined. Oh yeah. Um, and they don't ruin any additional characters because there's really pretty much Jet Reno. That's left. it. Yeah, that's the last one they have to 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 kill off here. So. Yeah, I, God, she's just got. They'll probably literally kill her. Yeah, own. that's probably the only way. That's probably the only way to do it. Um, I kind of hope they give Tignataro a crying scene. I'm not sure that she could do it. Um. <laughs> no, I don't want to see it. I, I've had my fill of crying. <laughs> God, I've just felt it's it's so fucking it's so lazy. That scene with Pike, like going around the room, calling people out for doing stuff. Hey, gold stickers for everybody. Vaguely Asian guy, I think. I don't even know. I like Has he how you stood there. Ever had a line? <laughs> you were doing a good job standing at your post and sometimes looking around. That was great. There was a black guy in that scene. Yeah. Hey, black dude. <laughs> I think his name's Token. <laughs> Probably. <is. laughs> I mean, what a lazy fucking show. What a lazy fucking piece of shit show this is. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. To tr- just these desperate attempts to try to inject character um, into these scenes. It's like, yeah, we fucking ignored you. Um, all, all, all two seasons of this. Now, we're going to give you the, the spotlight. Like, go fuck yourself. I mean, it's just... <laughs> hate spiral yeah it is it is it's fucking table scraps man like it's 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 pathetic and it's insulting and yeah i i can't imagine these these fucking writers have got it made this has got to be the easiest job on the fucking planet <laughs> yep oh my yep. god every annual review it's like hey you wrote words on you page. did fantastic strung them together the... people said them and idiots on the internet fucking watched it so <laughs> Well, the one the one positive thing that that we can walk away with is it's going to be a real surprise for Burnham when she realizes her mother's anchor point is not on Terra <laughs> Yeah. Oh shit! I'm in space. Oh fuck! <laughs> I gotta swim to a planet now. <laughs> well, she'll right. She'll probably show up right next to her mother's dead, exposed fucking body. Like, oh god. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> with, and then she with the kills broken herself. empty suit right next to her. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. She, we forgot to put it back on her. God damn it. <laughs> oh, we should have given her a warning, even though we gave her like 20 seconds. Oops. 
It's like her mom made that fucking tutorial. <laughs> hey, if you want to do time travel like me. What the hell was that? <laughs> do you want to get lost in the future? Follow these simple this is instructions. What you gotta do. <laughs> Step one. Uh, don't take math. <laughs> Thanks, Kima. Thanks, Kima from the wire. Appreciate that. Well, if it leads to Burnham's death, I'm happy. Well, I I mean we can only hope, but it's <laughs> it's not gonna happen, man. It's not. <laughs> I think that we've uh, pretty much yeah. covered all the ground, though. Yeah. Well, everybody, thank you once again. This has been the Wednesday Night Gentlemen on the latest Star Trek episode. Join us again on the last episode of the fucking <laughs> season. And if we're lucky, we'll never have to review Star Trek Discovery again because it'll get canceled in the off season because it might be the worst show that's ever been yeah. on television. But... On the off chance that it isn't, join us for more treks in the future. <laughs> for, for now, it's time for us to boldly go. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>